beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ro and today I'm going to let you guys know everything that I watched in the month of February. So this month I watched 22 movies in total, 12 of them were new, one of them is a show and 9 were rewatches. So I'm going to go through them in order. The first one that I watched in the month was Cry Wolf. This is a slasher from the 2000s. This is a story about a woman who gets brutally murdered and a bunch of college students decide that it would be fun to email all of the students at the campus and make up a story basically saying that there is a serial killer on campus and that the woman that died is the first victim. I really enjoyed this one. I just think the story is really clever and I really like the end twist. I will say that the kill scenes are a bit weird. Like I didn't really like the camera work that they used on those scenes, but all in all, I still found this one quite enjoyable. This is a rewatch. I obviously enjoy this one, so I gave it three stars out of five. Then I rewatched Gossip. This is a 2000 movie. I gave this one three and a half stars out of five. This one kind of reminds me of Cry Wolf and that's why I decided to watch it, but mainly because of the whole gossip part of it. So in this movie, this girl and this guy are at a party played by Kate Hudson and Josh Jackson and James Marsden finds them kind of making out on the bed and he decides to tell his friends like this is what he saw and that they should maybe come up with some sort of rumor that Josh Jackson's character took advantage of Kate Hudson and they start the rumor and it becomes this big mess. Obviously don't want to say too much because I do think that that's enough information. If I give you more, I will give away the storyline. But it's very interesting and it shows you how powerful gossip can be. So I really enjoyed this movie. Okay, so this one's a first time watch. This is House of Wax, the 1953 version. I had previously watched The Haunting and The House on Haunted Hill, the original version. So I really, really wanted to watch House of Wax and obviously Vincent Price is in House of Wax and I was very, very keen to get into this one, but it took me a while. So finally I watched it. I didn't mind this movie, it was okay. It took a while to get to the point. It was slow. It wasn't as exciting as I was hoping. I really loved The House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. But this one just didn't do it for me, so I only gave this one 2 out of 5 stars. I know that some people really love this movie. I prefer the 2005 Paris Hilton one. Next, I watched Silver Bullet from 1985. This one stars Corey Haim, and it is about a werewolf who is killing people one by one. But the town thinks it's a serial killer. This one was really fun to watch, but it wasn't my favorite werewolf story and it isn't something that I'm going to be re-watching. So I did give this one two out of five stars. Like I said, it wasn't the worst. There's other movies that I just prefer over this one and I won't be re-watching this, but it wasn't a bad one. So I don't think that you should skip it just because I've given it a two. You might actually really love this one, but for me, it's something that I'm not going to be watching again. Then I watched Scream again, the 2022 Scream, so the new one. I went to the cinema to watch it with my brother because he had never seen it before, so I said I would accompany him. And I just really enjoyed this movie. I think it's one of the top three. I will be giving you guys my ranking one of these days, I promise. I will be doing a whole Scream special. Then I watched Terrifier. This is one that had been on my list for so long and I was just terrified, terrified of Art the Clown because he's just so scary. I believe that years and years and years ago when it came out, I watched All Hallows Eve, which stars Art the Clown and that scared the crap out of me, that segment. So I kind of was pushing it aside a lot, but I knew that because it's a slasher, I had to watch it. So I ended up watching it. and. I didn't mind it. I think that the first half of the movie was decent. I think that the story was good and I think that the actress, the main actress was very good and obviously Art the Clown, fantastic. But once it hit like the midpoint, I didn't love it as much. Like it started to drop the ball for me. It wasn't as intense, it wasn't as fun. 
It didn't scare me. It was kind of silly. It was a little bit sloppy. But in saying that, even though I did quite enjoy the first half, I didn't love it enough to continue. And I knew by that point of the film, I just wasn't going to love this movie. And I didn't want to waste my time on it. So I ended up not finishing it. I gave this one one and a half stars. I know that so many horror fans love this one, but I just couldn't quite get there. Then I watched Dead End from 2003. This is kind of like a Twilight Zone type of movie. I didn't hate this movie. I watched most of it, um, but I ended up giving up 20 minutes before it ended when really probably 15 minutes because five minutes at the end would probably just be the credits. But the reason I didn't push through is the acting. The acting was so bad from every single person, even the good actors. They just couldn't, I couldn't deal with this. It wasn't good for me. I couldn't handle it. And I don't understand how this movie had more than three stars on Letterboxd. I gave it two stars. I just don't understand why people love this. I think the premise is really smart, maybe that's why, but the execution of the story was just not good and I I just didn't enjoy it as much as everybody else seems to have enjoyed. I don't know. Then I watched Alice Sweet Alice from 1976. I really enjoyed this one. This is a slasher. It is about a girl called Alice who is a little bit disturbed um, and at the beginning of the film while they're at communion her sister gets burnt alive and dies and everybody thinks Alice is the one who did it so she ends up getting taken to a mental hospital and people start to die off and be killed and it's just very unique. I really enjoyed the twists at the end. I really liked the acting in this movie. I thought it was really enjoyable for this time. Obviously, slashes during this period of time were always very slow. They're very slow burn. But I really, really liked the story. I probably won't be rewatching this just because the pace was too slow for me. I feel like if they remade this and just made it a lot faster with the pacing, a lot darker and grittier I definitely think it would work so I would love to see a remake I gave this one three and a half stars then I watched Con Air I love this movie it's a rewatch for me and I obviously gave it five stars because to me it is almost a perfect film and I absolutely love it and then I watched Night of the Demons this is the 1988 version and I really enjoyed myself watching this this was really strange and bizarre. I loved the lead up to the party. I just really loved the Halloween vibes in this. It, the aesthetics in this were really great. The, the makeup of the demons was really good. I just really liked this visually. I could definitely see myself watching this every Halloween now. It's going to become a Halloween movie for me. So every year I'll probably watch it. I will probably watch it during that period of time. So I definitely really enjoy this one. It's very cheesy, typical cheesy 80s film, but I absolutely loved it. So three out of five stars for that one. Um, I really do want to watch the remake. I hope it's as good as this one, if not better. So I will let you guys know because I'll probably watch that next month. Then I watched Tourist Trap. This one is from 1979. I quite enjoyed this one, but again, I had a problem with the pacing. The beginning of this movie went pretty quickly into the action, which I loved. And I feel like it was doing such a great job, but then the last 10 to 15 minutes dragged for me. And I felt like the movie felt like it was so long, even though it's really not a long movie. But that part, the 10 minutes just felt like forever and I wish that it kept the pacing that it did throughout the movie because I quite enjoyed that. It was a pretty fun slasher. I do think it's worth watching um, but it's not one of my favourites. I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. Then I rewatched The Shawshank Redemption, gave this one 5 stars obviously. Then I watched, then I rewatched Wish Upon a Star. Um, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Wish Upon a Star is a story about these two sisters 
and during a night of stargazing, when a shooting star goes past, Haley makes a wish to be her sister and the next day she is in her sister's body and her sister is in hers and they have to go through teenage life in each other's bodies. So it's the typical like body swap movie, but it's just really super cute. It's a very Disney movie. It has that feel. It's got like a very Freaky Friday feel to it, but I just really enjoy this one. This is probably one of my favorite body swap movies. It's just a guilty pleasure. Then I watched the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I went into this with not very high expectations because I knew a lot of people didn't like it. I did enjoy some parts. I think some parts were really well done and I think that there were some pretty creepy bits but the ending seemed very rushed and I absolutely hated the very end. What a crap ending. I gave this one one and a half stars. Then I watched The People Under the Stairs from 1991. This is a Wes Craven film and I quite enjoyed this one. I thought it was really good. I would absolutely love to see this remade into like a harder, darker horror. I think that it would be so freaking good because this one does have some comedic elements to it. So this is a story about these thieves that break into these rich people's house and when they break in they discover that these people are holding children in their basement. Um, that's what I'm going to give you, but it's very, it's a very interesting film and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I do think they are remaking it, but don't quote me on that. I would love to see a remake. I think that this movie was a lot of fun and it's definitely something that I would re-watch. I gave it three out of five stars. Then I re-watched Fright Night from 1985, the original. I gave this one four and a half out of five stars. I just love this. It's so fun and cheesy. It's got the typical 80s feel to it, which I love. It's not my favorite vampire um, movie, but it is one of the top five. So I definitely just love watching this. If you don't know what it's about, it's basically about this boy who uh, watches a lot of horror and his new neighbor moves in and he starts to suspect that his neighbor may be a vampire. And I also really, really love the remake as well with Colin Farrell. Then I rewatched Valentine. This is the movie from 2001 starring Katherine Heigl, Marley Shelton, David Borans. I can never say his name properly. Um, this one I gave two and a half stars out of five. This is a rewatch. I've seen it before, but basically it is a slasher about a killer in a cherub mask killing off these women. Yeah, that's what I'm going to give you. But it's, it's, it's pretty cheesy, but it's a lot of fun. Then I watched Fright Night Part 2. Um, this one I didn't love as much as the first one. This was a first time watch for me. I gave this one two and a half out of five stars because I do still think it had really great bits. I did really love the vampires in this. I thought they were really great. The acting was fantastic. The visuals were great. But I feel like, again, some of the pacing was a little bit off. It wasn't as fun. I feel like it could have been a little bit fast, more fast paced. I feel like they could have condensed the story a little bit more and made it a little bit more compact and it would have been better, but I didn't hate it. So I definitely think that's still worth checking out. I went in blind. So I suggest if you've seen the first one, go into the second one blind and enjoy it that way. And then I rewatched Sugar and Spice from 2001. I gave this one three and a half stars. This is a story about a bunch of girls, a bunch of cheerleaders who wear these doll masks and rob a bank. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of cheesy teen fun, but I love it. And then I watched No Exit. This is the movie that's on Hulu and Disney Plus that is based on the same name book by Taylor Adams. And this is a story about a girl named Darby who gets stuck in a snowstorm on the way to see her mum and she has to stop at a rest stop I guess or I think it's a cafe and she's stuck there with a bunch of strangers and when she goes out to get reception she sees a little girl trapped inside a van and she realizes that one of these people that are stuck with her in this snowstorm is the kidnapper. Very tension and edge of your seat type of thriller. It is a thriller action. I will say I did enjoy the book a lot more. They did cut out some bits from the book that I absolutely loved. There was a few 
there was two chase scenes in the book that weren't in the movie that I think if they were they would have made it more intense and some of the characters were a lot creepier and a lot more crazy in the book than in the movie but if you haven't read the book I still think you'll really enjoy the movie I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 anyway because I really enjoyed it and the lead actress is fantastic I think she did such a great job I hope to see her in more horror because I think that she was so good and such a badass and then I watched The Lodge from 2019. The first half of the movie, I was really enjoying. I loved it, the tension was there, I was scared, I was wondering what the hell was going on. But then the last 30 minutes of this movie just disappointed me. I hated where it went, I hated how it unraveled near the end. It just felt like, I felt so disappointed and it was just really flat and it felt lazy so I didn't love this movie unfortunately I like I said really was loving it all the way until the last 30 minutes and then I was really bummed that I wasted all that time watching this movie because it had so much potential and I thought I was gonna love it as much as I loved The Night House but it just didn't get there for me and yeah the ending ruined it for me I ended up giving this one two out of five stars Okay, so now that we're done with the movies, I'm going to let you guys know the shows I watched. So I finally watched This Is Us and I binge watched it like crazy. I literally finished the first five seasons in like less than a month, I think, which is insane. And now I am watching the sixth season as it's coming out. It's coming out every two weeks. But yeah, I'm really loving this show. It is so good. Mandy Moore deserves all the awards, in my opinion, because she's the only one who is shown throughout her life when she's young and when she's this old woman. And even when she's this old woman, she does such a good job. Like, she's so believable. Her mannerisms, the way she speaks, the way she walks, the way she holds things, it's just, she's so good. I think that she deserves more than she is given. But I absolutely love this show. I love the family. I love the relationships between everybody. I love Jack. I feel like my future husband has to be like Jack because he's just perfect. And I just love him so much. And I really, truly ship Mandy Moore and Marla Ventimiglia. I know they're both in relationships. I apologize, but also this is a fake ship and I just love them so much. I also finished season one of Chucky. Um, I will say the first two episodes or so, I wasn't so into the show. It took me a while to really get into it. I kind of left it aside and then picked up on it once I finished This Is Us and I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty decent. It's obviously not scary to me. I just don't think that Chucky is scary to me as an adult, but um, it does have some jump scares, which are good, which are always fun for me anyway. So I enjoyed that, but it is a pretty decent slasher series. And then I finished The Outsider. This is based on the Stephen King book of the same name. I gave this one four out of five stars. Uh, this one was actually very good. It's more of a thriller mystery. It is about this boy who gets murdered and they think that the coach is the one that killed him and so they start to investigate and realize that the coach seemed to be in two places at once and it doesn't make any sense and so they start to look into this more and more and uncover something very odd. And that's what I'm going to say because I don't want to give anything away. But it is a very great thriller, mystery, police procedural type of show. So if you're interested in those, I definitely recommend you check it out because I really liked it. I'm also still watching the, the last season that came out of Money Heist. I think I only watched like two episodes, but it was just, I don't know. I feel like I'm losing interest and I haven't really... I've kind of been slacking on it to be honest. The same thing with Emily in Paris season two. I think I watched one or two episodes and that was weeks ago and I kind of just don't feel like that excited about it but I will get to it because I did really love the first season and then I 
I have also been watching Euphoria. I finished the first season in January. I forgot to mention that in January's video, but I finished the first season in January. And I don't love the show, but it's hooked me in. So it's like I need to kind of finish it. It's not something that I'm kind of sitting around waiting for the new episode to come out, uh, but I still enjoy watching it. It is a little bit depressing and sad, but I think that Zendaya is amazing. And so I basically watch it for her and Jacob Elordi because he's very attractive, even though his character sucks. So I watched a lot this month, which is good. That is it. For my video i hope you guys enjoyed it please let me know down in the comments below if you've seen any of these what you think of them let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel i would love to have you join us and i'll see you in the next video bye